Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna do a little recap from my long drive event in Kingsport, Tennessee from last week. I've had some time to reflect on the event and digest all of it. So first and foremost, I'm going to insert the vlog footage that I took while we were out there. We took a look at the grid and things like that. And afterwards I will come back and give you a little debrief into the equipment that I use as well as how everything turned out. So stay tuned. We are at the long drive event in Kingsport, Tennessee. It is seven o'clock on Saturday and Moo and I came to walk the grid, check things out, see how everything is set up and holy cow, for a televised event, this is insane. The stands are huge. It's insane. There's a VIP like hospitality area. There is a merch tent, a box office areas for the kids to hang out. I mean, it's insane. So we are super excited. We just walked the grid and it seems like the right side is where I'm going to be aiming. And yeah, it's seven o'clock. It is so stinking hot. Moo competes at 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. So that'll be good for temperature. And then I'm at 4.30 to 6.30. So it's gonna be Toasty Roasty. I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of what the venue looks like and the tea box and the grid and all that cool stuff. So I hope you guys enjoy and I'll see you soon. Okay, so we are on the tea box right now and this is the spot here that we'll be teeing up our balls in. And what's nice is that at this event, um, you can tee up on either side of it and get data. So both lefties and righties will be getting data this week. And I'm so happy because lefties have missed out on data for the past few events. Um, the last time we had data available was in Mesquite. So it's super exciting that we get to see data again this week and it should be a lot of fun. I'll get to see kind of how I've improved and yeah, how I perform. All right, here's the tea deck. Wow. And the grid. VIP hospitality over there. Here is the start of the grid. They did quite the job at painting the lines and the big WLD logos. This is really, really cool. So this grid is actually on a hole and it looks like it's a little bit downhill, but then kind of goes back uphill in some spots. So we gotta see which side of the grid are the hot spots right now. Okay, so we're 280 here, 290, 300, 310. I think goals for me this weekend is to at least get to 310. That would be nice. And if it's more, great. So you see here that we are downhill at uh, 290, 300, and then it starts going back uphill a smidge at 310 and 320. And then right at the 330 mark, it starts to go back downhill a little bit. So and then we can see on this side that so 290 there is downhill, but 290 here is uphill with this big knoll. So so yeah, it's uphill at 290 here, downhill 290 there. I think right side, for me at least, is going to be the aiming spot because I don't want to land on the front side 
of this big old knoll and get no roll. I think for me, my aiming points are going to be down the right side because like I showed you, it's downhill on the right side at 290 to about 310 and then starts going back uphill. But on the other side, the 290 is uphill. And there's a big knoll on the left side that I don't want to flirt with because if I land in that knoll, then I'm gonna get no roll. So right side of the grid it is. Wow, it is so bright, I can't see. Here are a few of the ball marks from today. You can see that the ball skips forward a little bit, but it's making some craters, some little baby craters in the fairway. So I don't know how much rollout that's actually gonna give us. So here is the warm up tee. They said there should be a couple of spots for the lefties. So probably at the end over there, I think. And here's the range. So in terms of mindset for this week, I'm actually not as nervous as I thought that I was gonna be. Maybe it'll be different tomorrow, but so far I feel good about my practice and my progression and I'm kind of in the mindset of no expectations you know I'm gonna go out do my thing and whatever happens happens um, regardless of the result it's going to be an amazing learning experience um, having like having this be like a first televised event <clears throat> for me ever is crazy and for someone like me who gets very preoccupied about what people think of me and that kind of thing um, it should be an interesting challenge for me. I'm sure a lot of people can relate to the feeling of, you know, I don't know, not thinking that they're good enough or am I going to do well? Can I handle the pressure? All that kind of stuff. It'll be interesting to see how that goes. I am giving myself the goal to just like enjoy it, stay in the present moment, have fun. And I mean, we're just out here to hit some bombs, right? Like you can't get that stressed out. So. I'm excited and I hope things go well. I'm super excited for Moo tomorrow morning. That'll be so fun to watch for the women's division. <clears throat> we are 16 women in the field and eight of us will move on from tomorrow to Monday. And so top eight will be viewed on TV on the golf channel. So I'm really hoping that I can do well enough to get into that TV slot. It's Wait a little bit. Here comes a cut down the left side with my right now. I would say under. I would bet a little under Maybe 335. that. 335. I take the under 331. 331. I like that number. 331. Good ball from Savannah Meyer Clement with a little cut. Yeah, she came and she's not playing. Like I said, she's gotten better every single event. Live on the Golf Channel at 8 p.m. Got to see the girls give that ball out. And, uh, and this would be huge for Savannah Meyer. Just if someone doesn't, if they don't hit the ball in play, she's going to end up having 325 points. So she's got a ball in play at 287. No one else currently has a ball on, on the board. Andreos with the ball down that right, left side, and it's cutting back. That one's going to be close. That's a big ball. 170. I do like the profile of that shot. One, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if she does that for every swing that she has in general, she's – most likely gonna win a set. Savannah Meyer Clement center punched this golf ball. She hit this one pretty well. That one looks good. Yeah, I, I, I like this ball from her. Well, let's, let's see, her longest drive so far is 302, which would take the lead if that was you know her best ball. I think that one's gonna be in. Savannah Meyer Clement with a win here would be at you know at, at 425 as well. This is. No one has a ball in play. They're de definitely they're all feeling the it. So Gabby Powell and my dish of teapot are sitting on the bubble right now. Trying to get a ball in play here. Final balls right here. They're going to hit at the same time. And Savannah Meyer Clement. Savannah Meyer Clement. Oh, like, oh, she lost by one yard. That's crazy. She could have got in right there. All right. So before we take a look at equipment that I used, let's do a little recap, debrief about what happened. Um, I wasn't as nervous as I thought I was going to be. I felt pretty confident. There were some nerves, but in my warm up, I felt great. And I was the first group to hit. And that was my best set. I had a drive of 302. 
and the grid was mostly a carry grid so having a 302 on the board in my first set was very encouraging and then the weather hit so we had to take a 20 minute break uh, for weather conditions there were storms in the area so we all had to go back to our cars and then 15 minutes 20 minutes later we came back out started warming up again and then got back on with the event um, my second set was my first ever OB set and that really threw me off. Uh, for that set, I was furthest to the left for the tee boxes and I knew that with my carry distances and how the grid was kind of laid out, I needed to be hitting the center right area of the grid because it was more downhill where I would be landing the ball, whereas the left side was going uphill. So with a very undulated grid, uh, I had to be very particular with ball flights and where I wanted to land the ball in order to give myself a chance at winning a set. And so um, I was hitting good shots. They're all solid. However, they're bouncing and just kicking hard right out of bounds. So I had my first OB set, which was not a great feeling at all. Um, that's not very typical for me. And so it kind of threw me off a little bit. And then I was just playing catch up the whole way through, right? So. Uh, the last set, I really needed to win it. I missed the win by one yard. Um, had I won that last set, I would have made it on to the top eight and would have been featured on the Golf Channel the next day. Uh, it was a very hard one to swallow. It, it really uh, crushed, <laughs> crushed me a little bit. And I just knew that, you know, I could have very well been in the top eight um, hitting for the golf channel that next day had one I not gone OB in my second set and two had that extra yard in the last set to make it through so it was kind of a heartbreaker um, I learned a lot of lessons obviously and I'll be taking those with me to my next event so all in all good learning experience but definitely a heartbreaker uh, not gonna lie I was in kind of a sour mood after that but Having time to reflect on it now, you know, I just have to give myself permission to let loose a little bit more in competition and not be afraid of, you know, going all out. The second you start to be careful is a second that, you know, things go wrong. So I have to just kind of embrace the letting loose part of it. That was the recap. Uh, World Long Drive put on a great event in Kingsport, Tennessee. The venue was crazy. They had a merch tent. They had a box office. They had a VIP hospitality area with food um, for everybody, big stands. And um, they also had a player's tent that was air conditioned, which was so key because it was hot and air conditioned bathrooms for the players. So the event was very well done, very well organized. And so yeah, big shout out to World Long Drive for setting up such a great event for us. Next up, we're gonna talk about equipment. So I've been hitting with my Cobra heads for the past few events and I could not be more happy with them. Uh, I have them both set down to either seven and a half or eight degrees, depending on conditions. Um, typically, I hit with my LA Golf A Series, which is a mid kick 50 gram in the three stiffness. So that's kind of like a regular stiffness for LA Golf. And I really, really love the feel of that. I like the mid kick in this one. It just allows me to launch it a little bit higher, a little bit easier. And then um, Stephen Lowe, thank you to Stephen Lowe at LA Golf Canada for sending me their G series shaft just in time for the event. It is super, super lightweight at 47 grams. I kept this one at 48 inches and it's made out of boron material. So very, very solid, very light. And I used this one throughout all of my sets, really liked it. My equipment was awesome. I loved having both of these options with me. And then obviously I have my big cat rip it grips on here and those are just a tried and true classic for me. I also have the weights in my drivers. I much prefer having light weights in my head just because it is easier for me to swing it fast. So that is the little recap from my long drive event in Kingsport, Tennessee. 
Our next event will be Worlds in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, unfortunately, the Oceanside, California event got postponed to March 2024. So the next one in sight is Worlds in Atlanta. That'll be mid-October. So we've got lots of time to prepare for that, and I am very looking forward to it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you'd like to see next, and I will see you soon. Bye.